34 years, a local charity, you know, we're kind of a bit of a, a kind of a, a hidden jewel, a, a kind of a you know, diamond in the dust. Uh, you know, the more we talk about the work of Ron's Mill, the more we uh, hear from different people, oh, I didn't know that you do the work you do. So we, we feel passionate about what we do and we want to get the word out there. Uh, we work with children and young people and families uh, in Cambridgeshire, principally in Cambridge City, but also in South Cairns. We support about 3,000, 3,500 people a year. We have a range of programmes. Uh, different programs responding to different needs. We are an organisation that's creative and responsive to need, uh, but I suppose the common thread running through all our work is that the young people, the children and families that we work with, they're facing different challenges, different obstacles, uh, disadvantages and difficulties, and so there's a whole range of stuff going on. But I suppose for us in terms of the, you know, the team challenge and the 24 peaks, it seemed appropriate that we would rise to a challenge in order to help the young people and the families meet some of the challenges that they're facing on a daily basis. You know, we live in a great city and there's, there's many, many opportunities, but actually there are people, you know, neighbours, people alongside us who are facing some real challenges, living in poverty, needing to overcome some of, those, some of those disadvantages, and we're there to encourage, equip, resource, inspire, and as we do that, we get inspired ourselves. Um, so actually, if you come on board with a challenge, you're helping a Cambridge charity do Cambridge work for Cambridge people, uh, but actually the stories go far and wide, so it is very inspiring. I, I love the work I do, and I'm, 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 I'm grateful to have the opportunity to be part of the team. So that's Romsey Mill. Visit, visit website, get Facebook page, all the rest of it, and you get lots more information about the different programmes, different, different areas of our work. So, to the challenge. I say to some of the guys on arrival, and actually, is it, it's Mike, isn't it? Mike did a three peaks challenge that Romsey Mill organised. James was there, so I don't know whether you recognise him on other faces. Yeah. So that's like eight Don't, years ago now, there, so that's before, yeah. before my time. I've been with, with Romsey Mill for about seven and a half years, uh, so that's before my time. But actually, uh, you know, on arrival and, and really thereafter, you know, lots of people continue to talk about the three peaks challenge. Recently I undertook a, a personal challenge which was to do a double marathon. I, run, I ran from the lowest point in Cambridgeshire, which happens to be the lowest point in Great Britain, to the highest point in Cambridgeshire, just over 54 miles. We managed to find 23 peaks. Uh, I hadn't run a half marathon before undertaking the challenge. It was a bit bonkers, but actually made possible because there was lots of support and encouragement from, from a lot of people. Um, and I think, you know, as I did that and got a sense of the, you know, the kind of camaraderie, the, the, the enthusiasm, the support, and some of the people that ran with me for certain stages of my uh, double marathon, they had done the three peaks. So actually I, I began to realise that this is about creating opportunity and space where people connect, where we build relationships, where we tell stories, where we support. And, and actually, you know, it, it's... It's going to be something that people will enjoy, even though it may be painful at times, um, and, and it will be something we'll talk about long after we've completed the 24th peak and we're back in Cambridge. It's a great opportunity. The, all the information in the packs on the tables and also on Robin Wall's website, we've got a Facebook page set up, but 25th to 27th of April. Uh, we're going to do it, we're leaving about midday on the Friday. Although, if that is a challenge for people because of work, we think there are probably going to be some people that will travel up a little bit later on the Friday. We've got one or two people who are teachers. They might find it a little bit difficult to get out of work by, by lunchtime on Friday, so they may travel up later. But the plan is to get up there and get, get um, up to the lakes for the evening to have a briefing, and then the, the trek begins very early on the Saturday morning. Uh, we uh, trek for the first day. We, I think it's Ambleside we end up in. Uh, we, we have a night there. We trek the second day. We finish, hopefully, mid-afternoon and back to Cambridge for the Sunday night. So we can fit it into a weekend. Then people only need to wait another uh, five days. And then we've got bank holiday weekend. So people have that time, time to recover. Um, <laughs> we, uh, we've engaged a company called Adventure Cafe to support us in organising the challenge. These guys are very experienced in, in organising these sorts of events. They've got mountain leaders, uh, you know, local people who know, know at the lakes and the peaks we're going to be walking, trekking. Uh, they can sort out accommodation for us and get, a, get us good rates with that. They sort out all the insurance. They know what they're doing. So we're partnering with them uh, in that, which is great. They're good guys. So some of the information is coming from them, um, and we're making it our own, and some of it's, it's stuff that we're, we're putting together. Um, 
In terms of what we're trying to do, we would love to get five or six teams of 10 people involved, so maybe 50, 60 people involved in this. We think that's doable. I think thus far we've probably got three teams. So, you know, the, the, you know we, we're, we're confident that we can, we can do that. We're asking individuals that participate to, to once uh, you paid a £75 deposit, that kind of secures the place, that's non-returnable because we have to give some of that over to a venture cafe to book accommodation. We're asking people to uh, work to raise £350. Okay? And what that means is that ensures that at least half of all the money that we raise is going to Romsey Mill. Okay, there are some costs that we have to uh, pay over to Venture Cafe. So that ensures following uh, fundraising uh, best practice that at least half of the money is going to the work of one Actually, people, and we hope people may be able to raise more than £350 each, thereafter all of that money goes to support the work of Romsey Mill. Um, the plan is to use that resource to continue to do the great work that we're doing. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be invested across the different areas of our work. But if people have a particular interest in an area of work that Romsey Mill is involved in, it might be work with children with autism, it might be some of the young parent work, it might be some work, the education work with young people, then there's a way in which we can talk to you about how we can best make sure that your support gets to that area of the work. Okay? So we, we want to give you all the support we can with the fundraising. So there's lady Diane Hicks, she's helped us to get this all set up, she's a member of the team, she's experienced in this stuff. She will do all that is needed to help people set up their just giving pages, talk to friends, sponsorship forms, ideas for you know, little fundraising events, if, if that's the way you want to go about raising uh, the support. We know that some people will decide that they want just to make that contribution personally, in order, to, in order to, you know, to cover the, the, the £350 as a, as a minimum level. But actually, we really want to get the word out there. We want people to know about what you guys are doing, because it is a challenge. Uh, it's going to be exciting. Uh, you know, I think it's going to be a brilliant achievement once we've completed it. And so we actually want others to know about it. And, and there will be people who won't be able to do the trek, won't be able to manage this, and actually they'll feel that they're able to take part and they're supporting if, if they have that opportunity to sponsor. So we really want people to be able to, to, to spread the word there. A um, couple of other brief points. Um, it is a challenge. It is going to be a strenuous challenge. The, guy, the guys at Venture Cafe, they, they grade different challenges that they organise. Um, and this has, has five stars. Um, so it doesn't get much harder. One star being the easiest. One star being the easiest. <laughs> five being, five being it doesn't go up to ten even, it only goes up to five. Five is the hardest. Um, to give you an indication, four peaks, uh, so three peaks is four stars. Um, but actually, they give some really helpful direction. If you can run 10K, if, if over the next sort of 10 or 11 weeks we can build up to a point where you're walking, you know, maybe in a, you, know, you can walk for sort of 20 miles, we can do this. And, and actually, we've got a training plan that Adventure Cafe have helped us put together. It's, it's not too arduous if we, if, you know, if we apply ourselves and we just work that through. No, everybody will, will be able to do this. We've also got a, a, a wonderful lady called Carrie Beddingfield. Carrie supported me as I did the double marathon. She knows her stuff. She's, she's uh, trained and competed both in terms of cycling and running and rowing uh, at a very high level. She's willing to give sort of support, advice, respond to questions, give some guidance around training. Uh, she's on board and she's with us, which is great. Uh, through Carrie, we've also got a small group of people, you, you, you may like this, uh, we've got a small group of people who are going to come with us, they're going to run the 32 miles, <laughs> 24 feet, they're going to run it. That, that really helps us then. When they're going to... I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, it's going to help us. They're, it's going to help us because at the end, they're going to be waiting at the end of the first Looking day. Looking smug. At the, <laughs> at the end of the second day. Looking smug, but ready to apply a massage to the most, most painful parts of our bodies. Uh, they, they, they're not you know, kind of qualified <laughs> physios, but they know their stuff because they do this elite sport stuff. So they're going to be there to ease those aches and pains and to encourage us and to, to whoop us on. We'll also have a qualified doctor as part of the team, so you know that's all covered. But also Adventure Cafe, we get, we're having mountain leaders assigned to every team. They know what they're about. And part of the reason we decided to go with Adventure Cafe is, unlike the Three Peaks, where actually the routes are fairly clear. You start at the bottom, you go to the top, you come down. With the 24 peaks, there's a 
greater potential that you might get a little bit lost on the way, particularly in terms of the weather. If the, if the, if the, if the fog comes down, if it's raining, it becomes a bit more tricky. These guys know it like the back of their hands. They can, you know, they can vary the route if we need to, if we get into any difficulties. So we're really trying to cover all the bases um, because we care about the people that are going to be involved. I think also because some one or two companies are going to be involved with us. It's great that NW Brown are here today and, and one or two others. And I think you know, we want to make sure that we're looking after uh, the... the, the uh, the, the staff. We don't want you to companies. come back with injuries. Exactly right. Exactly we want right. you to complete it and um, have fun. Exactly. So actually on the Facebook page, I don't, think it's, I don't think it's on the website yet, but it's on the Facebook page, there is a training plan that you can download, a 10-week plan. Going in. You're going is it in there? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, we've also arranged two dates for, for doing uh, a, a, a day-long walk, one in February, one in March. I'm just checking the dates. 15th of Feb, 23rd of March. The 15th of Feb date is here in Cambridgeshire, so we're not going to really get very high, but we may walk a few miles. And then the, the March date, the 23rd of March, uh, we're going to Derbyshire. And we, Carrie was talking about this, uh, that last week. This is the second briefing. We did an evening briefing last week. And she talked about it being about 30 miles, which sounded to me like quite a long way. Uh, but she said it, it's a great opportunity to really kind of test, you know, kind of how far we've got. Now, people don't need to... Uh, participate in those two training days. They're, they're a, an added extra. They're, they're a, they're, you know, we like to give a little bit more. We, we want to you know, create that opportunity. It's a good way to connect, good way to yeah. get to know people. But if you can't do that, don't worry. Uh, we'll just kind of want to encourage you and just keep in touch to let, so you can let us know how the training is going. So it may be that Diane every so often will ping an email or drop you a message to Facebook and say, how's it going? How's the training coming on? And also, how's the fundraising coming on? Can we do anything to support and encourage? It may be that... Uh, towards the end of March, maybe at the beginning of April, we might do a bit of an event. Uh, it might be a bit of a fundraising thing. We might do sort of a quiz. People like quizzes, don't they? Cocktail at the bush with a bit of a quiz, a bit of a fundraiser, and also get people together. So we, we, we want to plan that in. We haven't got a date for that yet, but we want to plan that in. Uh, okay, so that, I think... Shall I say something about equipment? Brilliant, do that. <laughs>